Hello everyone. In this video we're setting up an abilities toolbar. The goal here is to create a toolbar that can be used for PC, console and mobile. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm using the abilities I created in the Superpower 1 to 3 tutorials. However the abilities themselves aren't important for this video. It's all about setting up the toolbar to support abilities and creating it in such a way that would work on all platforms. This will be a two-part tutorial in part 2 we will set up being able to switch these abilities from the skills UI. In order to create this we will need Unity, Game Creator and the Stats module. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So in order to set this up I'm going to use this scene and I want to be clear here. I will be addressing the first couple of minutes to the people who actually are using the superpowers I set up previously just to make some small changes there and just to keep a couple of things. Now if you haven't set up any of those superpowers you can skip to the time that will appear in the screen about right now and you can start from scratch. Now the first thing we're going to do is right here we have a on start that is regenerating our mana now if you've followed the skill tree tutorial this will be a list variable if you haven't it would be a normal value now we're going to keep this action i'm going to drag it out here and everything else you see here we're literally going to press delete. So yeah, all the way the powers worked before is completely going to be gone. Now if we're going to go to our character, player, and we have powers, you will see a lot of buttons and actions here. And we're actually going to remove all of those as well. So let's just press delete, not the actual powers, let's keep those, but delete them and delete this as well and there we go I'm going to rename this to abilities because it will be more than just power so we're just going to rename it abilities so there we have that and yeah that's that's the first couple of steps now right now your powers will no longer work and that's because we're setting up an entire new system so let's get started first things first it's our player ui now you need to have some type of ai uh, ui set up i'll be reusing these icons but you can use your own icons and in the ui i'm going to add a panel there we go Let's make sure Gizmos is turned on. And it's going to be about this size. That's fine. Perfect. So in this panel, let's rename this one to abilities. As well, we are going to add some images. Now I'm going to keep the background just for now and we'll remove it in a bit just slightly easier and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a image and let's I'm going to use my circle button icon here um, you can obviously use whatever size you want but the reason I'm going to use this one is because it's nice and round and that's what I like so 32 32 is the size I'm gonna go for I'm going to put it about here there we go now I'm going to rename this already and I'm going to name it ability 1 there we go and let's make the default value about this color yeah that's about right and it's going to be quite transparent now the reason for that is by default if you don't have your 
ability toolbar activated, it will not be as obtrusive in the UI. That's the goal here, that's why it's going to be transparent. And let's duplicate this one, drag it inside, and we're going to rename this one active. And this will basically be the color you will see if it's actually activated. Now you can pick any color you like, just whatever matches the UI language you have right now in terms of colors. And yeah, so even though it's called active, we're going to turn it off. And next up, I'm going to drag in these icons I already have. So they are all here. And this first one, the above one, go to mix it around a bit compared to the introduction you just saw. And we're going to use this one. So this will be the first one. Let's turn it on. It's, it is actually on. And let's make sure it's actually in here. Now, let's make this a bit darker. That's all right. And let's make it a bit bigger. Perfect. There we go. So this will be the blast. So I'm going to change it around a bit. Now, if after seeing that introduction, you had the impression, it looked really similar to a triple A game created by Ubisoft called Assassin's Creed then you are 100% correct. That's where I definitely took the inspiration from in terms of design here. Now, the reason for that is because it's a type of toolbar that could be used on all platforms and not just something you could use on PC. So, and yeah, there we go, third one. Now, again, I'm just going to use icons I already have. So this was, let's rename these as well. So blast, shield, and slow motion. Now I have a couple of icons here and there we go. So this was the time one, slow motion. I'm going to drag that in and the shield was the shield, I assume. Yeah, perfect. And there we go. Now, these icons I previously had from a different tutorial, just going to remove all of them. So we're no longer going to use them. They are gone. And there we have it, some new icons. Now, for some reason, even though it is centered, it doesn't look centered, so I'm dragging it down a bit. And there we go. Now the last thing we need in this panel is a text and this text is basically the indicator what the user has to press. And yeah, again, I took that from the way Ubisoft did it in Assassin's Creed and it, it just makes a lot of sense to actually tell the user what to press. Um, that's completely up to you. You, can, you don't have to do that. I just thought it was actually pretty clever. And there we go. And that's it on the UI side. Now, if we look in our game, this is what it looks like. So it doesn't really look that, you know, obstructive if it's not activated. So pretty decent. And yeah, yeah, these colors are fine. Is this all right? I'm not really sure if it's good enough. But yeah, for now, let's just keep it like this and we'll see. So that's it for the UI side. And next up, we are going to look at our player. So this group has a couple of abilities in it. And let's actually set something else up first. Sorry about that. Let's create an empty here and we're going to call it abilities. Now you can also group this inside of the player. I'm just going to keep it separate like I did with my skill tree simply because it's actually nice nice and organized. It's just easier to find everything. Now the first ability 
the first thing we're going to do is going to do a trigger on start and we're going to drag this in now if you didn't watch any of the superpower tutorials this is really simple a drainage of mana so all we're doing here is literally draining one zero point one mana using a list variable in this case but you can also just use a default value zero point one wait one zero point one seconds and it's going to restart and this is just infinite basically so we're adding zero point one mana every 0.1 seconds now you can change these values to whatever you like but I'm just going to keep it like this and yeah that's what we're doing on start quite important there now the next thing we're going to add are all of the well all of the triggers really of what we're doing once we're pressing alt so let's set all of that up so we have this one, the next trigger and the next trigger are going to match each other. So let's change this and this will be on key hold. And there will be left alt. You can again change this to any button you like, whatever makes you happy. Now the cool thing here is that if you are developing for console, this is something that is definitely useful because you have a limited amount of buttons and you could for example use left trigger, left bumper, whatever it is you want and to activate this for example and then reuse the the sticks or a you know the buttons to select the powers. So it's a way to keep it simple in terms of the amount of buttons you're using so yeah mobile would just be touch of course but for console this is a nice trick and for PC it also helps limit the amount of buttons you're using and make it a bit more player friendly so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create these and we're going to make sure this is on timeout so when we're holding and let's give this an appropriate name as well so activate abilities there we go so once we're holding alt what are we going to do now we're going to use something we haven't used before which is graphic color so instead of you know setting images active etc we're just going to change a color here and let's open up the user interface go to abilities and let's drag this first one in there we go and it's going to become what color well, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick the same color but without the transparency so it's just going to become slightly more visible pretty sure that's what I did in the introduction as well there we go but it's not transparent so it will be really visible let's duplicate this and drag in to and this should be three and obviously there's a really apparent space for a fourth option here I just don't have four abilities set up yet so that's why I'm just using the three but yeah anyway so that's what we're doing so when we're holding alt this will be visible and once we let go which is the next one on key up the same left alt Going to click on this little plus because we are going to duplicate this set call it deactivate there we go I'm going to drag that in and we're going to change these to 20 percent just like they originally were
And there we go. Now if we press play here, we will see these abilities. They're transparent, which quite you know, indicates they're not active. We're going to go hold A, Alt, and they will become active. We let go and they become inactive. So yeah, pretty cool. Now left alt is going to function for more than just changing some, the colors of some buttons. It will be a condition to actually use any of these. So that's the next thing. So I'm going to collapse all of these. We'll no longer be needing them and we're going to add some new triggers. We're going to select a simple on key down. And here's where you can get creative, use the buttons you want. So on a controller, you could, for example, use the right stick, left, up, right, etc. to, you know, as it is kind of a wheel type case. So you can select the one on the left, up, right. On PC, I'm actually going to use the keypad or numpad, however you want to call it. And I'm going to use four, eight, six simply because that same that's the same type of circle rotation as the default a w s d for walking so it seemed to make kind of sense to me um, but obviously you can you know select whatever you want whatever makes you happy but this is something that seemed to make sense for me now we're going to add a condition here and we're going to add the other triggers as well don't know why this opens up, don't need those. I'm going to do on key down and this will be keypad 8. And another one which is on key down and keypad 6. Now let's add conditions here as well. And we need to do that but we're actually going to delete those last two straight away. So we only have the condition 6 that we added to keypad 4. Reason for that is we're simply going to duplicate these to save some effort and repeated actions. So let's rename this to no, keypad 4. So I'm actually going to name this the same as the button we're pressing just to keep it a bit easier in terms of uh, management to find out what everything here does so let's add and we're going to add our first condition now this condition will have a similar trigger so we're going to input keyboard and let's find that left alt there we go and being pressed so the condition here is that nothing will happen unless we're actually pressing left alt if that makes any sense so we can only this will be the activation of the powers and we can only activate the shields in this case if we're also pressing alt so there we go we are going to add a strange little thing here and I'll explain why as well and let's call this ready and it's just a empty there's nothing in there and we're going to look at set uh, active as another condition and we're going to drag in our ready here now the reason I'm doing this is because this condition will check if we're already using our ability Unfortunately, as you can see, the active, uh, checking if a object is active, doesn't have a toggle to check if it's not activated at this time, if that makes sense. And because it's not there, it's not an option in this condition, we are going to do an extra step basically um, with this object this empty in order to create the right conditions it will, it will make more, a bit more sense in a bit now what we are going to do in this first one let's look up active 
we're going to turn on our shield so let's go to our player characters player and we're going to drag in the shield now this is the first ability and really simply put let me go out of my 2d view and focus on my player here turn off gizmos the shield is literally what it's called it's a shield that's it no no magic going on here this is a shield and it forms around the player and that's it and yeah looks nice looks cool but enabling it setting it active enables it so what we're doing once we're pressing this button is we are going to enable it and we are going to duplicate this one and turn drag in our ready here and turn it off now the reason for that is because what I want to do is once we let's actually delete this last set of actions duplicate this one and I'm going to drag this in and turn it around now I'm going to hit play to actually explain what is happening here so here we have our game I'm going to press um, what is it for and this will activate and if I press again it will deactivate and this is based on this empty basically it's a sort of bool this empty surface bool so we can use the same button to turn it on and off again now as you can see nothing is happening it's not draining anything um, no icon gets activated those are the next things we need to set up but I just wanted to explain why we have this ready and it simply serves as a bool now if you don't have any ability set up obviously just you know change color or whatever you do when you activate something here but yeah that's how it activates so let's go on and take our next step here so this is all what we're doing right now with these actions for keypad 4 and what we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate this let's actually add one more step here just to make it slightly easier in the last ones where we deactivate it we're already going to duplicate this one and we're going to deactivate and what were we actually activating here on for oh yeah this was for this was the shield we are going to deactivate this one and I know we haven't actually turned it on anywhere yet but we're going to do that in a bit so these are the first steps and yeah that's uh, that's about it so now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this one rename it to keypad 6 and 8 there we go let's drag these in so we have keypad 6 and we have keypad 8 oh, the other way around perfect now let's make sure this actually activates the right thing so 8 was our blast and let's drag that in here so it's going to turn on the blast and it's going to turn off our blast and this was our slow motion so this is going to turn our slow motion on and it's going to turn our slow motion off and 
the readies are already the right ones, so because we copy this over, but we also need to make sure it actually turns off the right images here. So this was slow motion. There we go. And I forgot this one. This was our blast. And there we go. Cool. So yeah, really, really simple. Nothing all too exciting here. <clears throat> and there we go. So the next step is actually setting up these abilities to drain our powers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a trigger to drain our mana, sorry. We're going to add a enable, so on enable, and we're going to add a condition. Now this is in condition, we're also going to duplicate over just to keep things easy. So let's call this drain mana. There we go. And this condition is going to be based on mana. So let's call in our attribute value. So if our player's mana, and you can set the value for this, uh, whatever you want. I'm going to do five. So you need to have at least five mana in order to activate this ability. That's my choice. You can set one as well if you want. I just think it's a bit weird because one, it will just turn on for a brief moment and nothing will happen. So yeah, I'm just going to keep it at five here. And the condition will be based on attribute as well. So our player mana going to subtract and a value of 0 0.3. Now, this value is completely up to you. Just keep in mind, we're adding 0 0.1 from the start, so it needs to be a higher value because our mana is regenerating automatically by 0 0.1. So this value needs to be higher. So we can do 0 0.1, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So yeah, keep that in mind. We're also going to set active our ability now this is our shield so let's go to shield and we're going to turn on that icon and instead of doing a restart we're actually going to call these conditions now the reason we're calling these conditions is because and we're dragging in the same ones here is because this constantly needs to check if our value is still high enough so a restart wouldn't do that, it would just loop inside of here and it wouldn't actually check our value anymore. So doing a call conditions is the same as a restart because it keeps doing it, but the moment we're no longer at five, it will stop. So little trick there. And then in our else, if we no longer have enough mana, what we're going to do is we're going to set active our shield sorry about that our entire shield I'm going to turn that off and we're going to turn off that icon as well now we already did this when if we press the button again but those are different conditions if you will so that's just turning it off even if you have enough mana here it is going to be forced off if we ran out of mana so hope that makes sense so these are the drain conditions now this is really simple for shields and we're going to try this out and see what happens there we go so I'm going to hold alt press 4 and nothing is happening that is interesting must have done something wrong here so ready is active turn on shield turn off ready
Yeah, that seems about right. No reason this shouldn't work. So let's try that again and actually see what goes wrong. That is interesting. So on enable drain mana. Turn on that icon. Are we actually, yeah, we're activating our ability here. That's interesting. Let's have a look at what's happening here. So if I turn this on manually, it doesn't seem to work either. It just turns it off, self off by default. And it seems to drain a lot actually, it doesn't seem to drain. Now that's interesting, let's see what we're doing wrong here. So subtract value of 0 0.3, turn on active, and we need to add a weight, sorry about that, I completely forgot, need to add a weight of 0 0.1, there we go. And this seems a lot better. Now let's try that again. Alt and <coughs> there we go. Perfect. Turns off automatically. Now let's regenerate it a tiny bit more. It's activated, I'm going to on long press and turn it off again. And it doesn't turn off the icon and it doesn't cancel the drainage, but that's completely fine. That's the last step we're going to add actually. So everything is working as it should right now. Perfect. So that was our shield. Now let's go head over to our slow motion here and our slow motion works pretty much exactly the same. We already have an enable because once we turn on slow motion, it is actually going to take the actions to slow down time. Now this is important because we need to reset these values as well if we turn it off. So we're just going to add conditions here. We're not going to change the existing ones. We're going to delete the, this set and we're going to copy this over and add it to slow motion as well. Now you can change these values. So if slow motion, if you want this to drain more, less, you know, completely up to you. I'm just going to keep it the same. I'm fine with the same drainage. But that's a nice thing uh, compared to the previous system I made is you can set these values for each power, which gives a lot more flexibility. So here we have our drain mana. It calls the correct conditions, that's all good. Now it is going to deactivate shields, which is obviously not what we need. So we need to deactivate our slow motion and it needs to turn off our slow motion icon. There we go, perfect. And it needs to do a couple more things. So that's one difference and that's all up to the way the ability works. Is when we activate it, it's going to slow down time and we need to cancel that. So we need to set time back to its original value. And we need to set the run speed back to its original value as well. So value and the default value is four. Now, if you set up a higher 
run speed and you want to check that you can always check under your player character and see the run speed so because I'm using a run speed of 4 that's the value I'm resetting to so you know always keep that in mind this might be different for your project and I just noticed I set them in the wrong one so let's copy those over real quick there we go so yeah one extra step when it comes to slow motion so something to keep in mind and the last one is our blast now the way I set up this ability is completely different so it's not something that is on for a certain amount of time that could be toggled off the blast is a one-time bang that just requires more mana so the way this works is not the same so we already have a set of abilities so this is basically what it does and what we need to do here is we need to add a couple of the same steps we're doing so attribute value mana subtract and I'm going to subtract a high value here of 50 there we go it's quite a high high value and it has a condition is blast active so I'm going to remove that condition it's going to be an attribute value mana and you can set this to whatever you like whatever makes you happy I'm just going to do a percentage for now because I don't really know how much mana I actually have by default. I have no idea. So I'm just going to use, you know, you need to at least 80% in order to use this. But set this to whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it really simple. So we're subtracting mana. It's setting already uses set active for something else. So I'm going to duplicate that and we're going to make sure it also activates that icon and there we go and once it's done I have this empty here I'm pretty sure it was related to one of the things I removed so that's actually perfect I'm going to drag this one in and it's going to turn active back off at the end of it and yeah that's it this, is, this one is slightly different and that's simply because of the way the way this ability works. Now I'm going to add one action to the else here. If we don't have enough mana, we're simply going to turn it back off. Um, blast, there we go. And we're setting it back off. So yeah, one little extra step and that's it. Now let's make sure this is all set up correctly. Now what you did notice is that those the icon was off and it was still draining so that's why we need to add an extra step and that is that of stop no not stop cancel yeah there we go cancel actions we need to turn off the drainage there we go so it's no longer draining and that's also the action that activated the little icon so I'm going to add that to our slow motion as well this was slow motion right yeah it was slow motion and it's going to turn off these actions um, no the draining actions there we go that's better and at the end of this um, because we set that up with the other one as well we need to copy over the same steps so it's not just going to cancel unfortunately cancelling will not reset time or reset the run speed so we need to add that back here that's one extra step so it's going to cancel those actions going to set time back to its original value and we have to set the run speed back to its original value as well so a couple of extra steps and that completely depends on the abilities you use. Now for keypad 8, it's actually one important thing here. I'm going to remove the ready here. 
there we go I'm going to remove these alternate actions as well and let's remove this now the reason for this is really really simple the blast is not something that could be toggled back you know on and off so it's a one-time blast literally so I don't want you to be able to turn it off halfway through just to save on some mana for example no it's it's an ability you have enough you turn it on and that's it deal with it so yeah it's one uh, one little extra detail now let's see how all of this plays out I'm pretty sure I forgot several things but let's give this a go so we're turning on our shield that's all fine I'm going to let it drain just to make sure it all works properly so yeah turned itself off that's all good I'm going to turn it back on again and turn it off manually that all works as well that's really good news now let's do time slow motion yay and turn it back off works as well time is back to normal and I'm going to let this last one build up seems about 80% and we're going to turn it on and that doesn't work okay well that's at least something there so let's see why this doesn't work so it's not our skill tree it's our abilities keypad 8 all being pressed turn on blast okay you think that should turn it on right so let's go back Everything else is working. That's interesting. Why doesn't blast work? Okay, did I set that up correctly in the abilities here? So keep at eight. Yep. Okay, well, that's interesting. So the conditions, it will most likely be related to the alternate condition here. So let's just remove this for now and just see. Yeah, so okay, something is definitely wrong here with our blast. So let's see what it could be. So we have our conditions. Notice the icon didn't activate and that should activate. Could be related here. Or percentage should actually be greater, not less. That's, uh, that is a valid point. So let's give that another go. And there we go. So I'm going to Alt and yep and that's it perfect so everything works and yeah th that's it really that's all we need to do so this obviously is a lot easier to follow along if you did see those superpower tutorials however in the meantime you could just set something else uh, temporarily now in part two we're actually going to have a look at our skill tree and how we can add abilities there that we'll be able to swap in our ability toolbar so you'd be able to set different different types of abilities active but still retaining the same functionality as we set up today so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time.